<laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to After Chat. This is episode 7, which doesn't have a title, so I didn't get around to it. So we'll figure one out before the end of the episode, and that'll be the title on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, thanks for coming back. We took last week off because of the Easter holiday. Uh, so we are finally getting caught up on the stuff I'm putting online versus the stuff we're recording. Yeah. Uh, this week, 6 and 7 should go online, and then we'll be up to record on Sunday, air on Tuesday is my plan from here on out. Um, I was talking to, uh, to uh, Dave Wiesner yesterday, though. I was over at, or Friday. What uh, the other day. What do uh, well, well, he hasn't been putting up ITAP in a while because he's been really busy with work. Oh, yeah? But I was talking to him. He, he watched episode 5 because he saw me put that up on, on... The one with the terrible audio? No, four is the one with the terrible oh, audio. Okay, 5 is the one I did by myself. Oh, good. Um, and he was like, oh, yeah, you, know, you guys should just do an audio version, which I hadn't really done because we're doing a photography podcast. But I guess you know, Jared Boland does an audio-only version. So it, and I figured out how with four because I was trying to clean up the audio in it. How to export just the audio and re-import it? Oh yeah, that's really easy. But yeah, it, it yeah, shut up. It's, it's an option. So I was like, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll do that. We'll put it up on Stitcher. I, I guess we'll put the back catalog up. Um, it'll just be the podcast. It won't be the other things. Like we won't put up the unboxing and things like that. Yeah. Um, so it's easy enough. That's yeah, it's easy enough to do. So, so since Wiesner suggested it, and he's you know he's the podcast guy. He's been doing it for a while. I was like, sure, I'll put it on iTunes. I'll put it on Stitcher. You know, hopefully it'll. Uh, Get, drum up some more interest. Absolutely. I also got an email this week from YouTube asking us to be YouTube partners. Oh, goody. Yeah, I, I don't know what that means. It, it, it just, apparently it auto-generates when you hit your first 100 views. Oh, yeah, so now we can uh, live stream. No, uh, no, subscribers is 100 subscribers. 100, 100 subscribers is live stream, which we'd like to do, so we yeah. need to get up to 100 subscribers. But 100 views allows you to partner. Uh, you could monetize from day one now, but yeah, no, I've I, opted I, not to do that so far. Uh, monetizing is good. We'll monetize when we have some subscribers so we don't turn everybody off right away. It's not like anybody cares. You watch four seconds of an ad and you hit skip. Yeah. I mean, That's and we get a penny. Anyway. Ooh. All right. All right, but, but jumping into news. I mean, I mean that, that's just stuff. But jumping into news, um, there's a uh, uh, cameraman. You know, I, I feel bad when I lose shit. Like, we were just talking about... Uh, Losing the uh, foot for my tripod before we start up. While we were setting up, I lost the foot to my tripod. So one of the cameras is literally sitting on a box right now because mm. I can't put it on the tripod. But that seems almost moot compared to uh, there was a cameraman, uh, Chris Newman of Cinecopter, who lost his $15,000 quadricopter. They were filming in the Amazon for Animal Planet. And it just stopped talking to the remote, apparently. It was like, I, I, was, I was watching a little, a little bit of the uh, video they had up that, that goes with the news story, and it was, he's like, yep, it just stopped talking to the quadricopter, you know, the quadricopter stopped talking to the, to the remote and just took off. And apparently they chased it for like an hour, and eventually they just gave up and let it go. And yeah, they... <sighs> They're usually custom built too. I mean, that's yeah, that I mean, that's his whole that's his whole business at at, at Cinecopters. They custom build their quadricopters. I mean, it's not like they're using a, a, a what's the the DJI Phantom. The DJI Phantom. Those yeah, he's cheap. not. Those are nothing. Those are. Yeah, he's not using a DJI Phantom. He's using a custom built quadricopter with a full gimbal head with, and and I think it was a D4S that was on it that they were filming with. So I mean. The fifty thousand dollar quadricopter. Then you got a six thousand dollar camera on it. I mean, it's he lost twenty one grand. It just poof, gone. It's in the Amazon rainforest somewhere, and he'll never see it again. Yeah, those are that that that's painful. Yeah, but it's one of those like I'm sure it's insured, so it's oh uh, yeah, it's it's, like, it's insured. That's why they gave up the hunt eventually because they're like, well, we'll get money, we'll build another one. It's interesting. Like, I'd love to start down that path, but it feels like it's a little behind the eight ball at this point. Well, that's where you start with the DJI fan. Well, DJI yeah, Phantom you would never just go build a quadcopter. Just I know enough engineers we could just build one. It's not about the building one. It's operating properly. <laughs> operating properly is a very difficult thing, even with the DJI, yeah. which does everything for you. Never it's, mind one that's just you built in your garage. Oh yeah. So that's uh, yeah, that's kind of. I was like, oh wow. I watched it. It was just. 
painful watching the video of them trying to hunt it down because yeah, they, they decided imagine. they decided at the last minute they're like you know what let's record us trying to find this and so make something of this yeah and it's 45 minute video on YouTube with them trying to find their copter and they eventually just give up I got to imagine that took that was like three or four hours of real time because they cut back and forth to things going on so it was like oh it's not that's the worst part about that it's not the gear it's the production day you know the gear is oh, nothing yeah. compared to the production day yeah they, they luckily they they, you know, they lost the day, but they got something out of it. Oh, yeah, but it's, they still didn't do their job. No, oh, yes. Yeah. That's like the whole, the gear is nothing. It's, it's the tool, so it's the actual production day that's the real problem. Yeah. Wow. So, oh. You can, we'll talk about the Lytro thing. You want to talk about the Lytro? And then you can go back and forth. We can go back and forth, yeah. So Lytro is announcing their, their second camera, which is actually a full something that's actually professional grade, whereas the first Lytro, so if you haven't seen what the Lytro is, the Lytro is a light field camera, which allows you to focus a picture after it's taken. So it's a camera that lenses the image into a bunch of different sensors and a very complicated array of sensors. So you can focus on different subjects after the picture's taken. The problem with the first Lytro is that it wasn't high enough resolution to really use professionally. Yep. It was a box about this big. It looked like a... It didn't look like anything. No, it, it really was not didn't. really a camera. It was a rectangle. So when you take a rectangle like this, it wasn't... It was a non-camera, basically. So Lytro made the Ilium. Ilum? Ilum. 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 The Alum. Ilum. There we go. Really, they called it... Yeah, so... Illumination. Ilum. Yeah. Spec-wise, it's a whole different camera than the first box. So it's a full SLR-style grip with the equivalent of a 30 to 250 millimeter zoom and was a 40 mega ray sensor. So it's a sensor that is, what is it, 10 times more powerful than the first one? Or yeah. Is it a couple times? No, it, it's, an order, it's, it's an order of magnitude. Yeah, it's 10 times. So it will produce high-quality images that really are stunning when you see them or high enough resolution to see on... 4K monitors in the future and all that kind of stuff. The, the really nice tech stuff is the software behind it. Oh, it's yeah. like it's one thing to take a picture that you can focus afterwards. That's not really the point. Embedding the app into your website where somebody can take the picture afterwards and click and focus themselves through the picture and kind of explore and see different parts of it that you didn't see before. That I, was like, yeah. I was playing with their demo image on their oh, site. Yeah, the demo images are really oh, cool. Oh, my God. And, and you can go slightly left to right. It's not, it's not just like... Focusing like okay, I focus here, I focus right, here. You, it's you like pick a point. Yeah, you pick a point, but you can pick a point, and you like have you played with the app? Yeah, because you could you could hold down the button, your mouse button, and move left or right. It will actually tilt. You, I think you get like five degrees of tilt left and right on top of forward and back. Yeah, so it's a constant f two point oh now. Which yeah, I think the first one was a little bit weirder, but a constant f two point oh across that zoom range. If you use it in its own certain way, that's the thing about the Lytro. You have to use it composing to be able to focus through a, a broad range of things. Yeah. So you wouldn't, it's, you shoot it completely different than you would a, a standard lens. Yeah, it, standard no, it, it's a different mentality while you're shooting it. But yeah, it's a huge jump. It's not like it's a new Lytro 2.0, it's like a 3.0 as opposed to doing like a slightly better camera. Yeah, it's they, a whole different level. It's like amateur to professional level of camera. Yeah. You know, they're very cool. What are they? A thousand dollars? Twelve hundred dollars? Uh, sixteen hundred is the release, the release price. And I actually, sixteen hundred is a bit steep as a kind of a trick thing. Yeah, but it's something I actually am considering. To be honest with I you, I would have to wait a while. I, I would never jump right on top of that. But down the road, I could see it as a. Uh, the issue with that is, for sixteen hundred dollars, you can equip a quadcopter with a. That's true. A Hero Four Plus. Yeah. So. It's cool, you can focus through the photos, or I can have a quadcopter that I can fly around. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely something that I, I would pick up from a place like Bar Lenses shortly after it comes out just to play with for a while. It would probably be like 200 bucks to rent it for a week. Yeah, or a couple of days. Or a couple, even just three it's $600 days. $600 is probably... 200 bucks for three days. Is yeah, three or four right. days. Because I charge you 350 to rent a 1DX for three days right now. Yeah. But... That's, it is something I would pick up. I'd want to play with. I'd want to. I, I want to put it in my hands. It's a good gimmick. As well, it's hard to use that word for it because it's it is a professional piece of equipment now. But it's an interesting asset to have to add to something like a consumer product. 
like a wedding especially something to add to your wedding package that's very different yeah i could see doing that with it but you have to have the personnel to do it it's one of those things you have to compose a picture so differently from your normal flow oh, you yeah. have to treat it differently you have to have the website for it but if yeah. you do it it will draw people it's interesting oh yeah you, you'd have it's a totally cool. different totally different I effect. Do it. I think I, I could see renting it for a, an event to see how it goes and see if it makes you makes you money. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And then going to the flip side from something that's really exciting and different. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I will link to this. Yeah, I always say I'm going to link to things and I never do. This is what I'll link to. Really do that. This is what I will actually link to because I want everyone else to feel my pain. Um, Alicia Proudly releases the most boring ad ever made. They're not kidding. Leica. Or Leica, sorry. I always say Leicia. I said I said Ilum, so. Yeah, that's fair enough. Free. Um, Leica, for their new Leica T line, their ad is a 45-minute video of polishing a lens. I'm not kidding. I have to see it. Oh, it's 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 amazing the, the care and precision they put into polishing the glass for a lens. But, oh my God, is it boring? It, it's so tedious. And I'm like, I, I, I had to watch it because I didn't believe that it could really be that boring. Oh, it's, it's that boring. But, you know, you can watch like, if, if, you, if you want the grasp of it, watch the first two minutes, skip about 20 minutes, watch for a little while, then skip to minute 43 and watch the last two minutes. And, and you could get everything I got and do it in five minutes as opposed to 45 yeah, minutes. The whole thing. Yeah. I mean, it's impressive because there's a lot of craftsmanship that goes into what they do, and like it makes some really nice stuff. They make really high-end stuff. But I, and I guess the people who love Leica will watch it just because yeah, they're hipsters. Yeah, it seems like, yeah, but, that's what I was going to say. It seems like a weird, a weird marketing thing just to Yeah, be it's a very boring. weird marketing thing. I, Leica is an interesting thing. Because I think if I had the money, I would own one. But you need to have a certain amount of excess money just sitting around to ever consider buying a Leica. Oh, yeah. It's not something that you need ever. No. It doesn't do anything particularly that much better than anything else does. No, it really doesn't. It's just the way. Well, these are the guys who the came. The style that does it in. These are the guys who decided to release a digital monochrome camera. Yeah. Which. It's like a nice pair of shoes. It's like, it's not, not going to help your feet any yeah but it's gonna look good doing it yeah exactly i yeah i've seen i've seen them in person too it's like it's a camera yay i'd rather have like a big medium format camera at that price i i do want to try shooting medium format i would i mean it's not the way that you would shoot medium format doing portrait stuff is not really that different no there's tricks you can do with medium format which are huge. It's the, the tilt shift and the plane, yeah. using the plane of focus by changing the actual plane of capturing the photo. Yeah. But that's not what you do with it. It's just having a giant sensor that, yeah, it's, that's all it would be. A 60 megapixel medium format sensor. Just yeah. buy a D800. Mm, I'm okay. That's what most people do now anyway. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. What was the next thing? Sigma. Oh, Sigma. Just, yeah. Oh, well, you're going to have to reset the cameras in a second, so. Uh, am I? Uh, oh, this stupid thing. Okay. Yeah, I am going to have to you, reset them. You and your timers. Okay. You, so you, Sigma is, has announced that they're going to, is they, have they announced that or is it a rumor? It's a rumor. So it's still a rumor. They're rumored to announce their 24 millimeter 1.4 art before the 85 1.4 art. So... Sigma announced their 50 millimeter 1.4 art, which was a huge cost to lens ratio. So you get a lot of lens for your money, and it's a top of the line piece of glass out of Sigma. People are waiting for their 85 millimeter portrait lens to be able to do what they want to do. So with the 85 millimeter, you have your portrait. So at 24, He's, he's battery changing. So there's a dead Canon battery. Was it a third-party battery? Was it a third-party battery? Oh, shit. 
Well, I can't make fun of him for that. So not sure why Sigma would do that with the 24 millimeter. Um, it seems like people want to see the 85 millimeter more than the 24 millimeter, but they're going to announce that pretty soon. Was it Photokina is September? September. So batteries. Oh, they have the 35 millimeter art out already? Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the 35 was the first one they, they put out. So they're going down to the 24 before they go up? Yeah, they went to the 35, they went to the 50, and then they're going to go to, it sounds like they're going to go to the 24 before they go to the 85, which kills me because I really want them to release the 85. Yeah, I just think there's more market for the 85 than there is for the 24. They apparently think the 24 is going to move first. Well, so. the 50. The 50 did well enough, I feel like they probably are going to space it out from the 85. Because mm. they know they needed the money at some point. <laughs> Sigma must be doing pretty well. They really have. I, I am impressed with, with I the mean, Sigma just like stuff. as a company, they must be doing yeah. pretty well to be producing the products that they are. Yeah. But, you know, they're, they're doing pretty well. The new products are, you know, the art line is amazing. I mean, yeah, it, I, they haven't actually gotten to play with it yet, but. No, I, I, I haven't even seen one at Hunts to pick up and play with yet. Otherwise, I would have. I'd have been like, oh, yeah. let me play with that. I always do that. So I'm hoping they pick some up so that I can have an excuse to, pl to play with them. No, yeah, right. Sigma's doing some good stuff with the art series. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, but I, I really hope that's just a rumor because I'd love to see them come out and say, here's the 85. Yeah, they could do both. They, they won't because they want to roll them out, I think. I, to say, I think the two markets for those are different enough where it might be all right. Because 85, you're going to shoot it, you're going to aim at portrait shooters, where the 24. Probably more landscape More stuff, landscape people. I think yeah. the 24 is on landscape. So. Because a 24 prime is kind of a weird lens to need. Yeah. Really often, at least from my point of view, because I use a lot of zooms. Yeah. So a 24 prime to me is not really useful ever. I can see it for landscapes. I mean, I understand the 24 prime and why you'd use it, but I think most people have a 24 zoom, so they're just not going to bother. It does seem like a weird lens for them to go with, but and you know what? They've been doing so well lately, I will trust them right now because... Oh, yeah. Well, I'm sure the 24, the 24 prime art is going to be a good landscape architectural lens. Yeah. But it's not really that wide, so it's not super architecture. It's... But if, yeah. I don't know. Do your thing Who first. Do my thing. My things are all done. The rant. The, oh. Your topic. I've my topic. Talking, I've been talking for 20 minutes. Uh, so, recently there was a, an, an issue, and uh, well, if I can remember what the guy's name, I, I know I wrote it down in here somewhere. Da, 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 with red jumpsuit apparatus, used this guy's picture. Well, not the band. Management took this guy's picture oh, yeah. off of his website, not even off of 500 pics or off of like Instagram or something. They took it off his website uh, of the band, of uh, the, the guitar player of the band, and it basically like ran it through a quick Instagram filter and put it on their Facebook page. It made it the, the cover image of their Facebook page. No credit, no anything. And this was in Australia, and the guy basically wrote to them and said, Hey, you're using my image. And, you know, I'd like credit. That's all he asked for. All he asked for was the photo credit. And the band's management went, like, screw you and this and that. And he was just like, look, I took the picture. I want credit. He didn't ask for anything. He just asked for the photo credit on Facebook. Better than me. Yeah. And he had this whole fight with the band's management. And, you know, apparently they were mocking him. They were very rude to him. And I really, I know I wrote it down in here somewhere, what the guy's name is, but it'll turn up. Um, I know. Uh, but the, uh, you know, this is the, the first of two stories of the week. But basically the, the end result was he eventually got in touch with the band members, not management, just by a fluke. Like some, something got routed to them yeah. that, they, and they contacted him and said, oh no, as artists, we understand, and they actually paid him. 
Yeah, like they volunteer, they voluntarily they, paid him. They yeah, were like, well, they well, also know they're gonna get sued to shit. Well, that too, but they they were apparently like like the band members were really nice. They they they, you know, he just was like, they were like, hey, send us an invoice and we'll pay you. And so he sent him an invoice. They paid him, and he's very happy. And all they had to do was put a watermark on the image that they took that just said photo credit by you know, and use the guy's name. And I really wish I could remember what the guy's name was. This is killing me. Um, but that was a good ending to that story. Apparently, the the other side of this is there's a whole other issue going on, and. Uh, the band Three Days Grace is taking it the other direction. They are taking people's images and their management and their tour manager in particular is saying, you should be lucky that you get to take pictures of my band. Why would I pay you for you to be able to use their likeness? I'm gonna take your pictures, I'm gonna do this, and unless you're a signed photographer with the band, screw you, you're making money off of their likeness. Now they're public figures, for one, so that becomes an issue. And two, this guy obviously has no clue what's, what is in copyright law. Yeah, it's... it's... He's basically saying, I don't give a shit about the law, and my solution is to go, hey, fuck you. In fact, yeah. um, that is exactly what he wrote on Facebook. <laughs> uh, I have oh, the whole... That's easy enough. You know, and, and he was basically like, if you're a concert... You know, he basically puts on Facebook, if you're a concert photographer, listen up. It's BS that all these ph photographers, and he puts it in quotes, are trying to sue bands these days for taking pictures and getting their pictures used. It's like, well, obviously you don't understand what these people are doing. They're making their living taking pictures. And, you know, he's like, well, I'm going to steal your pictures. He basically admits he's going to take your pictures and he's going to use them. And he's just like, oh, my God, this is, guy is dumb. Yeah. It's, un it's really just... It's unbelievable that people still think that way. Yeah. There's, there's a number, what, a part of this all stems back from how crowded the photography field is, mm -hmm. being examples of that, sitting at this table. Um, <laughs> and it's easy enough to take entry into photography and have equipment which is capable of photography at another level without the training to do so. Yeah. What, what used to be the, the idea is that if you haven't been doing it long enough, you are already volunteering to do things. You're, you're, especially younger photographers, they're already not getting paid, they're in school, they're interning with, you know, ahead of time set up to do this with a band or set up to do this at a, a venue. But that's not what the case is now. No. Anybody with a camera now is trying to scrounge money like everybody else. Yeah. They're trying to make a living doing what they are doing. Exactly. You can't do this anymore. It doesn't work. It's not. I mean, you could contract a photographer and say anything you take, we own, and you could write that into a contract. Yeah. But that's with you and that one photographer. And if they don't get the image you want and someone else does, well, you're which either going to happen, cause... which is going to happen. You're either going to buy that image or the rights to that image from the photographer who actually took it, or you're not going to get anything. Yeah, you're not going to benefit from it. It's, it's unbelievable. So the fact that this guy's out there and he's just like... It's easy enough. I mean, it's not a, like a complicated lawsuit. Yeah. It's, there's plenty of lawyers. Yeah. Lawyers, it's, lawyers the copyright exist. law is very straightforward as far as photographers are concerned. I click the button, it's my picture. Well, I mean, there's, there's other parts to it, but in, especially in that case of it's a, a concert, it's yeah. really It's a easy. public event. Yeah. You, I mean, you always own your, own your images. There's gray areas. There's gray areas to using someone's image for commercial purposes. Right. But, it, but you can't then take the image. If I'm using it as a portfolio piece and even selling certain amounts, that's the thing is you can't profit from someone's image without their consent. Right. If you're doing that without their consent, you're liable to action from those people. Yeah. But it's the same exact action as the other way around. It's the same exact action as using the photo without consent to profit from. Yeah. So it's I, and that's the whole thing. Is it's like it's not like these photographers are saying, "Oh, look, I got this picture of Three Days Grace, and I'm going to go sell it to TMZ or whatever." You know, it's it's a concert photo. Which you could do. Which you could do. 
But there's commercial use and there's yeah, there's a, journalism there's a, use. But journalism these, use. Yeah. Hey, they're covered by it. Yeah. Just like John Stewart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, more, more of a journalist than but, but, else. but these are bands taking the images and they're like, well, it's not for commercial use. I, like the guy's quote here is, I could see if we put it on the CD cover or on a T-shirt, then we owe you money. Otherwise, fuck off. Because Facebook isn't a commercial use. Yeah, because you're not promoting yourself. Why does anyone use Facebook now? Half of what Facebook is is commercial use. Yeah, and you're still promoting yourself to sell tickets to concerts, to sell albums. So it's still commercial use. It's so easy to remedy, too. Because I'm sure they don't want an arm and a leg for the photo. No, it's they really it's, don't. It's a photo that, that was not in use. It's a photo that if you're asked to use, I'm sure it's not. It's one thing you're asking an exorbitant amount of money to use it for a Facebook cover, but I'm sure that's not the case. Yeah. So, but yeah, the, the, the guy basically says, you know, it's your privilege. This guy's such to, a douche. The guy is such a douche, and it's really funny. You know, you know, he's actually quoted as a, so many photographers think they own something. That, you know, just because it's like, they do own it. <laughs> they took the picture. <laughs> it's like somebody really should just, like, give this guy a link to the fucking copyright <laughs> laws. But whatever. He, he's a douche, and these guys are going to be a problem. You know, Torma, it, it, the problem is it's not the artist. That's really where the problem comes in. Because, because if you get to the artist, you get past management and get to the artist, they're generally very happy to work with you. And they'll pay you because they're also artists. You know, and you're an artist, and they recognize that. It's the management that gets in the middle that starts screwing everything up. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's oh. a hell of a thing. Yeah, I get, I, but I guess the whole big thing with them is, is that they also took an image, and that's what sparked all this. But they actually recropped it to take the guy's watermark out of it. Oh, yeah. That's, and that's like, when you start. That's when you piss off a of photographer is well, when you take their well, watermark. That's also out. like just such an obvious legal thing. Yeah. It's like oh, so you just remove the thing that says you can't use it. Oh, it's like just admitting guilt. It's not even. Yeah. Oh uh, crap. So it's, I don't. I'm not a huge concert person. See, yeah, I like shooting concerts. I'm sure I would have fun shooting a concert, but I just it's not my thing. Well, okay. I like shooting concerts, A, in small venues. Like, I wouldn't shoot anything bigger yeah, than I'd Lupo's. I'd shoot for somebody. I'd have a lot of fun shooting for someone that I know, but I'd, I'd just go shoot a big band. I don't think I'd have fun. No. Um, and, and I've shot for uh, my friends' bands. In fact, I, I was I'm finishing up a set I, I did a couple weeks ago. I've, I've given them some advanced copies of stuff, and I think I pissed off the sound guy at, at Mardi Gras at JR's <laughs> because I set up the remote trigger flashes behind him but the lighting on the stage was crap. And it's a small enough venue that, and, and I could just walk over and literally just put the flashes on a shelf that was behind him. And there were like four photographers there. It was really funny. It's like a small, you know, great band, uh, Santa Gata, they're, they're, they're really good. Small, small venue, small crowd for that night, because it was a Thursday night, middle of the week, you know, and, uh, it was just really funny. It was the headlining band that was after them had even smaller crowd because all the people who came to see them left. <laughs> and the, the headlining band had like four people in the audience and no photographers. Um, and, uh, but it was, I think I pissed off the sound guy because I just kept taking pictures and like, I got great pictures because I had like, you know, high power, you know, I had the, the 550 and, and the other one at full blast because I had to overpower the stupid stage lights. But... It was fun. Yeah. It, it's a lot of fun. And I can see where people enjoy shooting concerts because, like I said, I, I had a lot of fun. I could see it. It's, I wouldn't want to have to make money off of it is part of oh, what no. I mean. No, I, I would never do it as my primary way to There's make money. There's plenty of things that I, could, I can see trying to be my thing, but mm -hmm. that's not one of them. Especially Wedding, like music as a whole. Is... Weddings are your thing. Weddings are, like, I, I enjoy... I enjoy that activity. I enjoy doing that. Which already puts you ahead of most wedding photographers, yeah. I, you have to admit. It, it, including the ones that employ me a lot. <laughs> but, yeah, see, I don't understand that. Like, I don't understand being grumpy doing anything that you do with a camera. Yeah. It's like, you're, you're a photographer. Shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> it's like, you're, you're not working in a fucking cubicle 12 yeah, hours no, a day. That, yeah. I don't That's care crazy. What, how bitchy people are, how terrible <laughs> brides you think the brides you work with are... <laughs> Or are before or after with the whatever they're talking about. 
It's, it's you're you're doing something interesting with your life. Fucking deal with it. Yeah. Exactly. So we skipped my thing at some point. To we skipped your thing because this is this so is hysterical. I really enjoyed this way more than I think should have ever happened. So the NYPD launches a hashtag, my NYPD photo contest. So on Twitter, you tag your photo with hashtag my NYPD, and they were just doing like a quick photo contest, which I'm sure, I'm sure someone thought was a great idea. Well, yeah, whoever works in the PR department at the NYPD has apparently never heard of the internet. Or the NYPD. I mean, <laughs> imagine being that person, though. You have to do something. You have to do something. And what do you do to be the PR person for the NYPD at this point? <laughs> it's terrible. The NYPD is like is just hated now. Oh yeah, for a good reason. But so they they launched the My NYPD photo contest, and surprisingly, it didn't go well. The photos you should really just look up the hashtag you, NYPD photo yeah, contest. You have you have to look this up. You're, this My is... favorite one is the guy with his foot caught underneath like a, a police motorcycle with like five. Looks like AP photographers around him just taking pictures of him <laughs> while he's getting his foot run over because it's, it's just it's I do the same it's thing. Like, it was like their their whole goal was take a picture with a cop. It's take a picture NYPD with a cop. A and and they cop. even and apparently uh, they even told all the cops you know we're running this contest. Good People luck. are gonna walk up to you and say, hey, can I take my picture with you for for the photo contest? Because uh, my boss's nephew works in the NYPD, so he even said they even told us to expect this and to be polite to these people. <laughs> Oh, like you needed more of a reason to go track the NYPD around, like using excessive force on people. There was already a good reason to, to watch the NYPD use excessive force and do unwarranted search search of just random black men, because that's what it is. Stop and frisk. Yeah, you know, because that's but, just but, great. But, you well, know. The, the pictures are amazing. There's people with their, space getting, their face getting smashed into the pavement by three cops, like, hashtag my NYPD. <laughs> It gives photographers like a really fun thing to do with those photos because usually those photos are kind of just they're they're covered up. They're not taken up by news media because they're they're controversial. But um, hashtag my NYPD, you've now got a award winning photographer <laughs> photograph that's hilarious <laughs> in the same stroke. Well, the best part about this was it spawned other cities to do it themselves, like not the police departments. But like people were make tagging things by LAPD, by Chicago PD, yeah, and doing the exact same the thing. My LAPD must be great. <laughs> so <laughs> there was absolutely like like you could look up basically my insert city here PD, and it's hysterical. I'm sure that my Boston PD one is amazing after this like the marathon. You know what? That might be the only one that's, that's like, actually positive. That one must be like just a bunch of happy people like just crowded together with beer in their hand. <laughs> that's what it was too. The yeah. last time there was, what was what was the event? It was after, um, it was after, I think it was after one of the, the, the sports victories, one of the sports finals. And you see like a guy in the, in the street with a full beer in his hand hugging a cop in oh, Boston yeah. who's like also just like has a beer in his hand. It's like, <laughs> yeah, that's Boston. Good job. See, Boston might, you might actually be able to look up my Boston PD and yeah, it, it might be, actually be happy. It probably is much happier. <laughs> Well, especially after the marathon, because yeah. that went off so well, and everybody was so happy. And well, yeah, it wasn't a, an armed camp, from but, what everyone said. Well, it depends on where you were, but at, downtown, no. But the people I, I know who were out was, along the route, they said that they were National Guard people with rifles. But even the National Guard guys were like, "I, they, I don't expect anything to happen." No, they, they were just hanging out. It's. I mean, they had an excessive amount of police coverage. That's that's not. There was. An excessive amount of coverage. Yeah. The thing with the helicopter freaked me out. <laughs> it's like, oh, everybody, just so you know, low flying helicopter doing radiation scans. Just, 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 just what? FYI, just because. guys, in case you see a really low helicopter, he was looking for nuclear bombs. Like, what? Okay. And yet thanks. that didn't seem to phase anybody out no. there. So that, nobody that, else, nobody else thought that was an issue. That <laughs> they're like they're looking for nuclear materials along the race course. <laughs> Fine. Sure. <laughs> Well, that pretty much covers everything yeah, I've written down. Was, uh, my NYPD like, thing, which is like my favorite thing. Yeah, that that was absolutely hysterical. Uh, I wish I had been in New York for that. I think uh, I would have like spent my whole time just trying to find those well, great pictures. Well, part of it was people were saying that the, you, the NYPD came back and said, part of it was, oh, well, we think some of those were staged or photoshopped. 
How do you stage a cop <laughs> stepping on your neck? <laughs> hey. Hey, come here. Step on my neck. Baby, come on. Step on my neck. What are they going to do? Like, <laughs> and I'm like, even if some of them were staged or photoshopped, that doesn't make up for the other 10,000 pictures you got. not what you say, because they're not. They're not staged or photoshopped. That's, that's such a stupid thing to say. <laughs> oh, they're staged or photoshopped. Everyone's wrong about that. Like, the NYPD's never done anything wrong, ever. Yeah, okay. Oh, that was such a bad idea. <laughs> but it was hysterical. <laughs> it was worth following on Twitter for a day. I didn't actually get to follow it. I just saw some of the, like, the select ones afterwards. Yeah, that, no, that was probably the better way to do it because there was a lot of stuff that was just kind of whatever. But The people who actually just did it to be nice ones felt like douchebags. <laughs> this is a picture of a guy yeah. like hugging two cops. Like, my NYPD. Apparently, being the nice guy and doing what was expected of you made you the troll that day. Yeah, that, the trolling that day was just like going to find a, a cop and be nice to them. <laughs> So, did you do anything fun this week? Nope. Did what? I? I had a wedding in Narragansett Saturday. That's cool. It was nice. Narragansett Towers, they shot a cannon off into the water. Like a cannon cannon? Yeah, like a 12 gauge shotgun brass oh, cannon. Oh, nice. It, that was one of those heads up things. <laughs> heads I up, was, we're going to do this? Well, no. No one said anything. Yeah. You just have to be good at a, being a photographer. I was standing on the balcony within earshot of the bride and someone said you need to go fire the cannon or something like that <laughs> and you look down off the balcony and there's a guy standing on a cannon like a brass cannon thing and without stopping looking around to see if anybody's around she just makes a beeline for the stairs down to the water the, the shot that was really good was the well-timed shot with the groom so i took the, the bride picture she you know it's not Perfectly timed, but you see her with a big cloud of smoke behind the, the shotgun cannon. The grooms, I timed it with the hammer swing just right so you see like this big spray of bright sparks out of the front of the cannon with it. It was fun. It was a very good wedding. Cool. It was last, last Saturday in there against it. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I went to Fenway this week. That was oh, fun. Oh, yeah. Um, it was for work, but I ended, we ended up with seats. I didn't know where we were sitting, so I didn't know whether or not to grab the camera bag. So it was like, you know what? Even if I got really crappy seats, you know, on the 7200, I might not see much, but it's worth taking the camera. If nothing else, I'll take pictures of us having fun and drinking beer. Yeah. Uh, turns out we were two seats off the field. We we're in row B in the field box, about 10, 15 feet behind first base, like beyond first base from home. Uh, not the best place to take pictures from because the first base coach was generally in the way of any left-handed batter that wanted to shoot. But right-handed batters were fine. I could see the pitcher fine. Depending on how the play was going, I could see the guy coming into first base, and second base was really easy to cover. Third base was a little out of range. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. I got some really good shots out of it, which I need to finish processing. I, I need to sit down and actually download them and process them. Uh, it was a Yankees Red Sox game, so that that always makes it good, right Which there. They lost horribly. No, this is the one where the Yankees blew them out. The ne next night was meant. the one. Oh, the Red Sox lost yeah. horribly. Yeah. Um, and then the next night, the Red Sox beat the Yankees, so it was a split series. Was it twelve two? What was the score at the end of the Red Sox one that you were at? Uh, it was fourteen three. When even was, better. Yeah. Uh, Bruins won. It's fine. Yeah, Bruins won. It, that was the best part. Was they had clips from the Bruins game up on the, on the board. Cheering for the hockey game. And like people would start cheering, and you'd be like, "What the hell? Nothing's happening." You realize that it's up on the up on the board on the big jumbotron. But they also because you know, if you've been to Fenway, you know they have the they actually still have the guy who changes the panels behind. And all the way at the end was the Bruins game score. So that guy was still changing it out. They act, and you could tell that they actually had to paint a new thing that said Bruins and one that said Red Wings. <laughs> but it was That's awesome. They, they were changing that up, and, and the Bruins did win that night, so that was nice. But it was a lot of fun. It definitely could see the joy of shooting a sporting event. I could definitely see why you would want something like a D4S or a 1DX to do it for the high-speed burst. Yeah. 11 um, frames a second. Is 11 frames a second would have been great. You know, I, I, my 60 does 5.5. And and Mine does 6. Yeah. And no, is it five? Mine's six. Yeah, there's a six. It's just yeah. a little faster. And I would get, you know, 
a burst, and sometimes I would get the ball getting hit, sometimes I wouldn't. I could definitely see where if you're shooting at 11 frames a second, you'd be like, and you could yeah. definitely get that. Yeah, time that shit anyway. Yeah, you still got to time it well, but and the other thing I noticed was even for as close as I was to first base, I was always at 200. Oh, yeah. Uh, 400, 500. 200 is not very long. No, it's really not that long. So 400, 500 would be easy to, to use there. Yeah. Like we, I had to do the, the thought experiment about what telephoto I would actually seek out if I had to. Yep. And I think the 400 2.8 is the... That thing's... <laughs> well, the 400 2.8 is just, it's like this. It's just kind yeah. of big and then it narrows quickly. It's not really that long because it's only a 400, but it's just kind of, the front element is like this. Yeah. And it's 8,000. $8,600. <laughs> Um, I was thinking about for if, if I get like a grant or something, I'll do it. Yeah, no, I was thinking of renting the um, Tauron makes a what the hell is it? It's like a four hundred five fifty. I sent you the link to it. It's a one fifty five hundred. One fifty five hundred. That's the one I would no, two fifty five hundred. Oh, all right. I think you told me it's a one fifty. No, they 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 have a two fifty five hundred, and it's a variable aperture. It's like two eight to five six. Yeah. So at one fifty, it'll be all right. It's not it gonna eight. do the crazy stuff I'd want to do. It's not going to do crazy stuff, but it's going to do some good landscapes. It'll get me animals. It'll, it would be good for a single lens to carry on a camping trip for going out. If I mean, if I'm going to rent a piece of equipment, I'm probably going to put the money out and rent a teleconverter and the 400, 500. It's like, if I'm going to really put a trip together and really use the gear, it's going to be expensive, but mm -hmm. I'll be doing something that'll be warranting it, you know? Yeah. It's, I don't think I'd rent something just to have around because the 200 millimeter is decent. I could see just renting a, a, a 1.4 teleconverter, which is cheap, or buying a 1.4 teleconverter because that helps. Yeah. Or just having the crop sensor. Like using, like I could see using a D770-300 on my, because it makes it a 300 millimeter and yep. it's enough. Yeah. I don't know. It's Nature photography is one of those really if you want super wildlife photography stuff, it's so expensive. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that, that's an insane amount of money to put down on that. That's why I was, like, thinking of going to borrow lenses, who I would love to get as a sponsor. I want to win their friggin' weekly gift card. Oh, I've been trying to win their gift card for a while. I also keep... Every, whatever, GoPro. GoPro that? also gives everything away every week. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I know... Uh, I, I talked to Grant on Friday about doing the, uh, well, you guys are going to hear this first. We haven't worked out any details yet, but we know it'll be in August. That much I've worked out with him. Uh, so it's pretty much after wedding season for you. But also, it's not really a thing anyway. It's not a huge Well, because it's going to have to be on a Saturday. Oh, yeah, but. But also gives us enough time to get the word out, get some prize support out. We're going to be prize support for the July and August tournaments at the Temple. Uh, but we're going to shoot, we're going to do a minis photo shoot day at the Temple Games. I've worked that out with, with Grant and Simon. We're, they're going to give us a table, give us space to set up, terrain to work with, white box if we need it. Uh, we'll, we'll bring our own, you know. But yeah, it doesn't take that much space. No, it, but it, um, I was talking to Grant, and we're going to get that set up. But that I'm definitely, if I don't already own a 100 millimeter See, macro. I would, I would never spend money renting a macro lens because it's, it's within range of buying it anyway, and it's something I need anyway, so I'd push off needing it until I could afford buying it. See, th th this is where I'm, where I'm at. If I don't already own it by then, I'm going to rent it. I'm going to rent the 100 millimeter macro, or I'm going to rent the 160 millimeter macro. I would only ever rent things I couldn't ever purchase. But that, that's just me. It's like there's something about. But the great thing for me is general. August is the is the other month where I get the extra paycheck for my day job. Yeah. Which would cover buying the 100 millimeter macro. So. Yeah, I might still things. buy the 100 millimeter it's macro. It's an excuse to buy it. You're not going to make enough money to really. That's the problem with the renting it. The renting it is an expense for the day, yep. which you're not going to make back. And you have to assume you're not going to make back. But I looked it up. For me to rent the 100 millimeter, 45 bucks for the three days. With shipping and protection, it ends up being like 60. Yeah. So you're going to spend bucks. 60 bucks. And say you make $100. It's like you're going to spend a large portion of it getting the lens getting the lens when yeah. if you had the gear you have a piece of gear it's 
I renting stuff that you need to own eventually is tough. I would only do it if I absolutely had to. It's not something I'd plan to do. See, I, I look at it the other way. Things that I know I need, but I can't afford right now, I would rent on a case-by-case -case basis. But I would only rent if it's one of those, if I don't have the advanced planning to do it. If you're planning an event, I would just not plan the event. Because it's like you, you're, the money which you could potentially make is kind of being put into renting something that you're never going to own. I don't think you're going anywhere doing that. It's like I'd rather, yeah. I'd see, rather where, plan where to you have would, to purchase it. And but see, here's the thing. That. Where you would buy a 100 millimeter because you need it for weddings. It's really for everything else. It's, I could use it for weddings, but it's really for everything else. I could use a 100 millimeter macro, but I have no need to actually have it in my inventory on a daily basis. I would want an 85.12 before I would want the, 80, the 100 millimeter macro. Yeah. So for me to spend 60 bucks and rent it for three days, do all the shooting I need, now this is assuming I can't get Matt Norris to just let me borrow his 100 millimeter macro, which he's let me do before, then I wouldn't have any expense. I'd just be like, hey, Matt, can I borrow your 100 millimeter? He says yes, and then I can use it for a couple of days. Yeah, it's one of the things, by that point, I hope to just be able to purchase, because I do need 100 millimeter macro. There's a lot of nature stuff Yep, I do. There's plenty of uses for 100 millimeter macro. Mm. That it should be in my kit. It's probably the next piece of glass I'm going to buy. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't seek out something that needed it until I purchased it. That's just how I, how I think about the business side of stuff. See, I'm okay with the idea of renting it as long as I'm also okay with the idea that I will make enough money back to justify renting it. Or you're not going to ever purchase it, really. Or I might not ever purchase That's it. That's like it's something that you'd rent that you never justify the expense of owning that I make. Like, it's easier to justify the expense of owning something that's $1,000, though. I, yeah. can, I can't justify buying an $8,600 wildlife lens. No. I can justify $350 <laughs> to rent it for three days for a camping trip where I might make some images that'll make me that money eventually. It's, it's everybody has their thing. It's, you can either, you can either have the experience of doing it yep. or you can wait wait and purchase the equipment you need and actually do it more often and have the equipment in your bag for it. But What's killing me about that 100 millimeter macro is the used price is basically the new price. It, it's such in such demand that... I don't, I mean... And it's back-ordered everywhere right now. As much as I do buy, buy used glass, I know that a used 100 millimeter, or in that color is 105 millimeter macro, might be $100 cheaper. It's not, it's not cheaper enough to justify no. buying the used piece of equipment. Right now, uh, I, I, I was looking on the Adorama site, because that's where I buy all my used glass from, because I trust them the most to Being actually test it too. out. And they have a used 100 millimeter macro, Canon L, you know, the, 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 one, that, you know, the one I borrowed from Matt Norris. And it's $50 less than buying it new. Yeah, because they, they know it's basically brand new. The only reason that they can get away with keeping it that high. The new one, back ordered from the manufacturer, no expected delivery date. They don't know when Canon's gonna give them another batch of 100 millimeters. So they're getting away with charging a ridiculous amount for used because there's no new market right now. No one has them new. Mm. Yeah, and I mean, there's no, <laughs> there's no reason to charge less for a good used lens. Yes. Yeah. Especially in Canon, because Canon is mm. just getting murdered by third-party needs for their lenses. Oh, yeah. That's why I love shooting Nikon right now, because everything is dirt cheap. Wow, the 100mm macro is a newer lens, and it's kind of specialized, so the used price isn't super low. The new lens is $300 cheaper, $200 yeah. cheaper. I, I actually looked at it, and I know I, I threw the idea at you, and you, you rejected it because you don't like the way it works, but um, the Sigma 105, which they make the 105 for Canon as well, they basically, yeah. they didn't, they didn't, follow Nikkor makes a 105 so we'll make a 105 Canon makes 100 we'll make 100 so it's 100 one, it's the only way to get a 105 on Canon um, I was looking at that as opposed to the the Canon one and DxO marks almost identically or better in every aspect the build quality I have issues with I have issues with the mechanical so the 105 millimeters from the first parties are self-contained they're very <laughs> weatherproofed yeah. They don't bellow. They're beautiful they lenses. Do. And they're durable. The Sigma 
it starts out roughly the size of the 2470, <laughs> which is smaller, and then it bellows out when it zooms to being like this big, <laughs> which puts off center the front element, which is big and heavy, and it makes it more difficult to use. It but it's not a zoom, it's stuff. still a prime. It's still a prime, but when it focuses, it extends out this much. It's Wait. legitimately this much. <laughs> Hey, did you look at the picture of it? Yeah. The lens starts out this much, and that's like, and then it focuses. And it's, it's. I just don't, I don't enjoy, I wouldn't enjoy using it because of the way the front element extends out, especially with nature stuff, the stuff that I do, you're going to scare off whatever you're trying to take pictures of. And see, I'm mostly going to use it to shoot minis and stuff like that. I mean, I could do it all on my 50 millimeter. Yeah. I could. I don't want to, but I could. I do plan on using that LED ring flash, though, no matter what lens I have. That thing's awesome for shooting minis. Yeah. It doesn't give off much light, but it fills in a lot of the gap. I mean, if you're going to do it, you're just going to set up lighting and just do it. Well, I'm going to set up lighting, but this lets you get that front light. With a 100 millimeter, you don't need to do that. You can With a 100, I wouldn't. With a 50, I need to because I get a lot of shadow. That's why you don't buy a 50 millimeter macro. Shut up. Even the 100 millimeter macro is, is the shortest macro you would ever buy because there's only this much, is it six inches working distance? Yeah. 100 millimeter macro is six inches working distance. So you need to light everything within that six inches of working distance for a one-to-one -one shot. That's why if you do anything professionally, it uses a macro using a 200 millimeter, which has... Or 160. Yeah, the well, Canon the, makes a 160. The Nikon is a 210. Um, it's 16 inches of working distance, so you yeah. have plenty of room to light. And yeah, the, the 160, I think, is 12, 13 inches, like 12.8 inches or something like that. Yeah. <clears throat> that That is, um, if I was going to buy a macro, I think at this point, I like that 100 millimeter, but the 160 is probably the way I'd go. It's so expensive. Yeah, Literally. but I don't do anything macro, so. But the 100 millimeter no does it. basically the same thing, just slightly more inconveniently, but still producing the same product, like result. Yeah. Well, I mean, the stuff I did in that 100 millimeter versus my 50 was insane. It was, it was well, yeah, amazing. the 100 millimeter is a professional piece of glass. The 50s aren't professional. It's just no, it's not a, it's not a pro. It's, it's their mid-grade. Yeah. The, the, the 50 macro I have is, is the mid-grade glass. It's that prosumer or whatever the hell title they give it. Yeah. No, it's, it's, you know, it's the same thing those, that the 70D is. It's one of those gear things that I'd always rather own gear. If I can avoid renting something, I would. That's I'd, just because I know... I know I need it. It's my next piece of glass. I would never spend money renting it. Just because money's tight and I know I could just wait and buy it. But yeah. you're not going to purchase a 100 millimeter. Like you're, that's not your next piece of glass. No, it's not my next piece of glass. So for me, renting it actually makes sense. And that's what I'll probably do for August is rent it. I mean, unless I just have one and then we can... Well, yeah. If I own a 100 millimeter at that point, you have no reason to rent one. No. It's expensive, so... If one of us owns it, then I'm not renting it. Yeah. By that point, I'll probably just own it or be close enough to owning it where I can freaking buy the thing. It's my goal. I have one more lens I want to buy before the end of the year. 85? 85 Prime. So much money. If Sigma puts out, if they even rumor. I would wait, I would wait for Sigmas. Even if it's like five years, I would wait for Sigmas. <sighs> five years would be too long to wait. If, if Sigma rumors an 85, if I hear, that, that's why I was so upset about the 24 when I saw that article. I was like, no, if it was the 85, I wouldn't even be thinking twice about the idea of buying a Canon 85. The Canon 85, the fucking grapefruit that it is, which, by the way, that, that, that is kind of its nickname is the grapefruit because it's pff, huge. Um, beautiful, beautiful images it takes, but it's so it's too specialized. It's too specialized. It's no, too, too specialized. Too specialized is the 85 1.0 they used to make. Well, it's just as specialized because it's slow. It's, it's very not specialized slow. It's because not of its f-stop. It's because it's slow. It is slow, and and I've had this discussion with Matt Norris, who we really need to get on the show. We really need to get him in here. Um, we'll be around, and we'll we'll get him in here at some point. Um, mm -hmm. I had I had this discussion with Matt because he's actually looking to sell his eighty-five because it's too slow. So I might buy his eighty-five. Yeah, I mean it makes which, sense to own for which I know was going to be in great shape because Matt takes care of his gear. Yeah, um, I might buy his eighty-five off of him instead of buying new, but he's like, we've had this discussion. He's like, so what are you going to use it for? I was like, in the studio. You don't take that out in the field. Not because it's too expensive, you might break it. You don't take it in the field because it's too slow. It doesn't focus fast enough. You, you can do it in a studio where you have time, where you are working with a model who can wait that second. You know, 
but you don't... It's not that slow. No, it's not a full second it's slow. Slower it's slower than the rest of Canon's lenses is the issue. Yeah. I think it's really still very usable at its speed, especially working with slower lenses as a whole. Like the Sigma, yeah. the Sigma zoom lens is slower the than you think it is. The 2470 it's, is... It's not as quick as I'd like, I'll give you that. But compared to the 85, it's probably a little faster. But, yeah. I don't think we... Do we need to reset stuff? Or do you want to just... I, I'm just doing it to be safe. Uh, this feels about nine minutes. If I, I would have just ended, but whatever. We can do the closing on a special little clip special little for clip you. Closing. No, this tells me I have one minute left on the ocean. It says that with auto reset. It doesn't... Uh, Definitely the right time to reset cameras. You know what we need? We need our own version of Steven Soder. Why an intern? I'm not here all day, so it's like... You are the intern. <laughs> You're the intern. Fuck it, I'm the intern. <laughs> no, Jesse's supposed to be here to handle all this shit for us. I had to stop at his house and pick up the recorder. Hey Steven Sutter, do you want to do you, you want to move up to Rhode Island and where the hipsters really live? We can't pay you, but what I, hipsters? I mean, there's, there's, there's hipsters, but other than the ones we know, I don't think there are that many hipsters. There's a lot of hipsters in Rhode Island. Go, go walk up Wickenden Street. Take a walk on Wickenden Street. You, I do. You, you can count. The, I have friends that are hipsters. So you, I know. you can count the hipsters on Wickenden Street. I've been in the record store. <sighs> I haven't even gone in the record store because. As much as I love vinyl and I love records, I'm afraid of the hipsters. They might convert me. <laughs> nah, the owner's just a douche enough where it's not like a hangout. Oh, that's too bad. No, Is no, it? it's perfect. It's really? what you want. Is it? Yeah. Okay. You don't want it to be like the kind of hipster den where they just kind of sit around and talk about shit that All nobody right. cares about. All right. Because the record store uh, that I do frequent is by my parents' house outside of Philly, and that place is awesome. I can A, anything I've ever looked for, I found there. Or if I haven't, I've asked the guy and he's had it shipped to me up here. Um, and B, it's enough of a hangout. They have a couple of arcades. They have a couple of cabinets and, and some stuff there where people will come in and hang out, but it's not hipsters. For a record store, it's not hipsters. It's awesome. Actually, the, the, the last time I was there, they, they, they converted it. I actually should have taken a picture of it for Grant. They had a, um, a sit-down table. You know, like the, the ones... Like, you can play Centipede on, but you both sat on the same side. That was Street Fighter 2. Hmm. But, you, like, all the buttons were on the table, and it was just, like, flat out. And there were two little kids sitting there playing with the... <laughs> and it was awesome watching That's them funny. play for a while. So you, they, But they had chairs. You could, you could sit and play. You didn't have to stand up in the cabinet. It was actually kind of funny. That's cool. Um, and next, the next time I'm down there, I'll take a picture. It's Amoeba Records in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Not that anyone from Doylestown, <laughs> except maybe my parents, is watching this. But who knows? They got, they got a Twitter. I have to look it up. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's there's there and back again records, which is I find it so funny that they just turned off. That's that I, makes me so happy. It worked great. It is it has been just fine all day. Now it just turned off. Mm -hmm. And the best part is it cannot be a battery because that one's on AC power. No, but what time is it? Getting about that time, right? It's about that time. We, we should just probably just pass an hour for that second. So yeah, we, we talk too much. That's okay. We like talking. Uh, just to point out, since the guys at Narragansett haven't ever gotten back to me, despite my many attempts to contact them to be sponsors, uh, maybe they'll pay attention now that we're drinking Samuel Adams. Yeah, this will fucking show them. We'll show them I'll drink Sam Adams for a week and see if that changes anything. Uh, if you are curious about us being sadomasochistic bastards, uh, we're gonna go over and do the media file after this, where we have Mango Rita to drink. <laughs> Fuck! It's the last one. The it's media the files. One. They killed the cranberry, so it's the last one. Uh, yeah, I, I appreciate that's the last one, but there's the until super, next week. There's the super secret one that only you and I know about. <laughs> until next week, that we I'm bring not that. looking forward to. <laughs> Uh, and it, you have to buy six of them. There's the issue. Oh, yeah. Everybody has to drink one Everyone whole has to drink one the, the whole secret, one. The secret, secret one. Oh, it's not as bad as you think. Actually, I've had it before. I realized I had it the 4th of July last year. We had a whole cooler full of it. Why? Uh, because the guy who threw the 4th of July party I went to is a Florida redneck. But that's like a special level. 
Yeah, yeah. He bought them because the 24 ounce cans were a dollar a piece. Yeah. So he just bought enough to fill up his. He literally. This is the best part. He took his cooler with the ice already in it into the store and said, "I'm gonna buy enough of these to fill the cooler." And he just filled it up. They counted off how many he bought, and that's how much he bought. And that was what we had to drink for Fourth of July. Yep. So <sighs> media files next week should be great. Yeah. The mediafile.org. Uh, no, it's the mediafile.wordpress.com. Oh, sweet. He doesn't even have his own Can domain I choke yet. Him and make him buy a URL. I tried to explain to him. I bought AperturChat.com. It's $13. It was 16 for two years. I was yeah. like, seriously. I'm cheap and I bought a year, but yeah. I was like, I'm, I know own two domains. I've got Aperture to Pixels and Aperture Chat, which sadly, Aperture to Pixels gets more traffic. <laughs> and I don't update it. No, it should. I mean, just, just it, by its nature, it should. It, you know, it, it, it does get a fair amount of traffic. Aperture Chat gets nothing because I haven't been pushing it yet. But yeah. that's gonna change. I'm gonna probably gonna I make don't a pay attention to mine as much as I should. I'm probably gonna make an Aperture Chat page on Facebook now, that's separate from Aperture to Pixels. Yeah, I mean, if there's a whole bunch of stuff that we have well, to work on for like the, the I, YouTube I, stuff. You know, I might skip the Aperture Chat page and just make the Bucket Castle photo page. Yeah, which is where we really should be doing there's, that anyway. We have to. There's some moves we have to make. We gotta get a logo. Okay, logo contest. No, we okay, got. No we'll logo do logo. Contest. Okay, no logo contest. Rachel will do logo. I think that's that's valid. All right, no logo contest. Sorry. Logo contest between the people who are watching this <laughs> is not gonna work. Because I know right, Cole we, ain't gonna fucking we, do it. We have five subscribers. Cole ain't gonna fucking make a logo. And two of them are me. <laughs> <'Cause Yeah. I'm laughs> when we're watching this like a year from now, we'll we'll laugh about it, right? <laughs> Weather. I'm already laughing about it. <laughs> if we were laughing about it, I wouldn't fucking do it. So, that's a fucking episode. That's Shut it. Shut your fucking mouth. We'll see you next week. And, yeah.